Now, we never want to get an agricultural plant to wilting point. We never want to get turf to wilting point because we've put it in a lot of stress at that point. Then it's vulnerable to disease. It's vulnerable to attack from uh, the, uh, the weather. Can affect it very rapidly, you know, if it turns off even more severe than it was. So when we look at grass, we get to wilting point, we're in, we, don't, we can't even play on it because now we'll start damaging it just to walk on it. So we don't want to do that. And if we're trying to grow agricultural production crops, shoot, we're losing production. Now the plant's fighting just to stay alive, let alone produce fruit. Like if we're trying to grow a potato or an apple or an onion or whatever, it's trying to just keep itself alive. It isn't worrying about making itself a nice, beautiful little potato that we can eventually dig and sell. So we never want to drive the crop to this point. And so we want to always come in this area between here and we want to stay within an area called readily available water and the field capacity. So there is a point in here where we're between field capacity and wilting point, about halfway, most crops it's halfway between the two that we call readily available water. And that readily available water between field capacity and readily available water is where we want to keep the soil moisture all the time. That's our goal. Keep the soil moisture between here and here. Gets to here, irrigate. Gets up to here, stop irrigating. Stay in that band. And that's easily monitored if you have a good soil moisture monitoring program at your site. And in turf it can be done very well. I mean you can get, there's excellent, excellent monitoring devices that are available that aren't going to cost a lot of money to do that evaluation. So it's kind of like a continuum. You can't put numbers on these because every crop is different. You know, potatoes, boy, this is a tiny little range. Potatoes don't have the ability to suck water at all. They're terrible. But a sunflower, man, it can really pull the water from the soil. So we got very divergent crops that will have very different uh, root suctions. We'll talk about that a little more in the next little set. A couple more words about different crops and their ability to pull water from the soil. Now we have that readily available moisture range that we're going to try to draw moisture out of the soil by the plant. Now the plant uses a method called root suction to pull that water from the soil. And that soil has a certain force called osmotic pressure or soil tension. We use the word soil tension to hold the water to the soil particle. So there's a constant energy battle going inside the soil profile as to where the water's going. Gravity's trying to pull it down. The soil particles are trying to pull it to the neutral areas where, there's, where it's drier than other spots, capillarity. Roots are trying to pull it into themselves to take it up into the plant. So we got a little bit of a battle going on in that, down in that root zone area. Well, 